Welcome to chapter 30. And yes, we're continuing with the subjunctive mood. In chapter 30, we work with the perfect and pluperfect subjunctive. And with that, you have all the tenses of all the subjunctives. In point of fact, you have all the tenses of all moods, of all verbs, and all of Latin. It's a great accomplishment to reach and finish chapter 30. We also work with the indirect question. And in chapter 30, we meet with the sequence of tenses. Let's go into these just a little bit more. The perfect and pluperfect subjunctive are fairly regular. For example, the perfect active uses ERI on the perfect stem. The pluperfect puts endings right on the perfect infinitive. If we remember the imperfect put endings on the present infinitive, the pluperfect puts endings on the perfect infinitive. Indirect question. Contrast indirect statement. I said subjunctive is less than fact. The indirect question is less than fact. Statement. Uh, he said there were seven chariots in the race. Fact. I wonder how many chariots are in the race. Less than fact, because I don't know. He asked me how many chariots were in the race. Again, that's less than fact, because it's a question. The answer is not known. That's what we mean by using the subjunctive versus the indicative. Indirect statement, indirect question. And then finally, we have something very peculiar, I think, to English speakers, a sequence of tenses. In other words, if the verb is a primary sequence, in other words, I wonder blank, my only options are the present or the perfect subjunctive. But if I say he wondered in the past tense, then I have to use a verb in the imperfect or pluperfect tense. This is a very strict, rigid rule for Latin, and it seems very contrary to what we do in English. I don't know if we have a parallel in English, to be honest with you. Read the chapter. Listen to what I've said. Put that with the chapter readings. I think you'll be fine. Welcome to chapter 30. It's a great accomplishment.